What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about high fat versus low fat diets and their effects on testosterone. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So I got a post from Minnow Henselman's Instagram sent to me, by the way, follow him, he's excellent, great evidence-based information. And it was showing a meta-analysis where they looked at high fat intake over 40% of calories per day versus low fat intakes, which was about on average 20% in a meta-analysis to see if they had effects on testosterone, free testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, and a few other markers like DHT. These studies range anywhere from like two to 10 weeks, and they did see on average the lower fat diets reduce testosterone. And here's why I don't care. <laughs> because body composition is more than just testosterone. Once again, Testosterone is one mechanism by which hypertrophy occurs. But guess what? Insulin stimulates muscle protein synthesis. So if you're having more fat and less carbs, you're having less insulin, it's not gonna affect muscle protein synthesis as much, or muscle protein degradation, because insulin inhibits muscle protein degradation. And if we look at the human randomized control trials, where they control caloric intake and protein intake, we just don't see differences really in body composition outcomes in people who resistance train on average. So why is, how is that possible? If, they're if high fat diets are having more testosterone, how is that possible? It's a pretty small change in testosterone overall. We're talking anywhere from like five to 15%, which sounds like a lot when you consider that those kinds of small changes have not been shown to actually change body composition in the literature, it makes sense. Just because you change the levels of a hormone a little bit, does not mean you're gonna change the outcome. Again, if there's one thing that you guys can take home from my videos, it is care about the actual outcomes. Outcomes are more important than mechanisms because there's more than one mechanism that sums up to an outcome. Outcomes are the summation of hundreds, if not thousands of biochemical processes and the outcome is the summation of the signal of those processes. A great example is aspirin. We know people take it because it reduces clotting. But did you know that aspirin also has procoagulant qualities? It activates some procoagulant pathways. But overall, it's an anticoagulant because the outcome is it reduces clotting. But if I was like some of these people on social media, I could be like, oh, don't take aspirin for reducing blood clots because look, it activates these pathways. Who gives a sh The question is not whether something activates a pathway or not. The question is, what is the overall effect of that treatment on the outcome? So again, when we look at low fat versus high fat diets, we might see a small difference in testosterone, but it's not gonna affect body composition. Now, if you like a higher fat diet, totally fine. Just make sure you're controlling overall calories and getting in enough protein and fiber. That is what really matters. That's why our app, Carbon Diet Coach, does not pigeonhole you into any one way of doing things. You can do a high fat diet, you can do a low fat diet, you can do anything in between. What's most important is your adherence and focusing on the outcomes, because that is the that matters. If you guys are interested in Carbon Diet Coach, click the link in my description. We're available on iOS and Android, and I will catch you next week.